Hi everyone, it's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a few fun techniques using the new Masking Magic by Gina Kay Designs and ThermoWeb. Masking Magic is a masking paper that is ultra thin, it stays down and it's reusable, it's super smooth for crisp clean images, it cuts easily, and it never leaves a residue. The first technique I want to show you is one that you've probably seen before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this wheelbarrow and then I'm going to stamp the little raccoon so he looks like he's sitting inside. So I'm going to start by inking up the wheelbarrow image and I'm going to stamp it onto the masking magic. And you can see this is a nice crisp clean image and I'm just going to take some scissors and cut that out. Now the thing about this technique is I only really need the top of the image cut out because the rest of it doesn't really matter because I'm making the raccoon appear as though he is sitting inside the wheelbarrow. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit of the detail out in case I want to use this mask for something else because these masks are reusable. So now that I've cut out as much of the detail as I need, I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock and a little bit of black ink and I'm going to stamp the wheelbarrow image. So I'm going to find a spot on the cardstock where I want it and stamp it. Then I'm going to take that little mask that I made from the Masking Magic and I'm going to peel off the liners and I'm going to place that directly on top of the image that I stamped. I want to make sure it's nice and precise. Then I'm going to ink up the image of the little raccoon and I'm going to stamp him right on top of that Masking Magic masking paper. And it doesn't matter that you can see his whole body here. So I have stamped him. And now the next thing that I'm going to do is peel that masking magic off. And now the little raccoon will appear as though he is sitting inside of the wheelbarrow. A similar technique is where you stamp flowers and then you stamp leaves and the leaves appear to be coming from behind the flowers. So I'm going to be using the poinsettia image from the winter flower mini set and I'm going to stamp the two leaves. Now even though I only really need one leaf mask, I'm stamping them both because while I'm cutting them I might as well make all the masks and then store them with the stamp set. So you can see I'm just going to trim out the poinsettia and it's very easy to do. These are pretty straight lines, not a lot of detail. So I'm going to cut this all out and then I'll be ready to do my stamping. Now I'm going to stamp that flower with some black ink onto a piece of white cardstock. Once that image is stamped, then I can take the poinsettia mask and I can apply that right on top of the flower. You want to make sure that you get it nice and even and right on top. And then I'm just pressing that down. So the next thing I'm going to do is stamp one of the leaf images and I'm going to stamp it off to the side. Now I want my next leaf to overlap on that leaf. So I'm going to add a second mask over that leaf. First I'm going to stamp another leaf up at the top here, same leaf. And now I'm going to take my mask and I'm going to apply it on top of the leaf that I stamped. So now I have two masks down. I have the flower mask still down and now I have a mask over that leaf. Now I'm going to stamp the other leaf image from the winter flower set, but I'm going to overlap it a bit onto the first leaf that I stamped. Now I'm going to peel off that mask and I'm going to reuse it for the other side since I used the same leaf on both sides. So I'm going to reapply the mask over the second leaf and then use that second 
leaf stamp to stamp another leaf and overlap it a bit. Now I can peel all of the masks off and when I'm done, my flower is going to be in the front and all of the leaves will be coming out from behind the flower. When you take the masking paper off, because it's so thin, just be a little gentle with it and you'll be able to use that mask over and over. Now you can see how the flowers in the front and the leaves are in the back. This is how I store my masks. I just pop them on top of my stamp set and then I store them in my stamp pocket with the die set. The second technique I'm going to show you is going to use a background stamp and I'm using the gauze background along with some of the masking magic and I've cut it down into quarter inch strips. I have a piece of craft cardstock here and I'm going to take those strips and I'm going to angle them down the entire card. Now you can decide how thick you want your craft stripes to be in between. So you can either have them very close together or you can have them farther apart. But that should be dependent upon what background stamp you use. If you're using a background stamp with bigger, more chunky images, make the openings between the masking magic bigger so more of the design can show. If it's just a texture like this one, you can have them closer together. So once I've applied all of the masking magic, I'm just going to trim the loose ends away, not completely to the edge, but just to get them kind of out of the way. And now I'm going to use my embossing magic pad and I'm going to apply that powder all over the surface of this piece of cardstock. I'm going to use my background stamp with some Versamark because I'm going to emboss this image. So I'm going to ink up the stamp completely with Versamark. And then I'm going to take that piece of cardstock and I'm going to lay it face down onto the stamp. I really want to make sure I have the stamp completely inked up because it's going to kind of press through those lines of masking paper. Now I'm going to use a piece of copy paper on top and I'm going to rub all over the surface to make sure I get a good transfer of ink. Once that's done, while the masking paper is still on, I'm going to apply some Gina K Designs Fine Detail White Embossing Powder over the whole surface of this card. And you can start to see that image coming through, that texture coming through. And once that's all through, then I'm going to, I'm going to just do a little bit more here where I see some empty spots. Then I'm going to emboss this image with my heat tool. I just recently got the new WOW heat embossing gun and I absolutely love it. This heat tool is really cool because not only is it great for embossing, but it's great for drying things. It has two settings. So the higher hot setting is for embossing powder and that's the one I'm using now. But if you want to dry distress oxide ink or you want to dry alcohol inks or you want to dry watercolor, you can use the lighter setting, the, the lower setting, and it's a great, great tool. I highly recommend it. So now I'm peeling the masking magic strips off and now I have textured diagonal stripes going across my entire piece of cardstock. That is super fun. And you can see all of that texture in there. Now I'm going to cut a little diagonal off the bottom. I don't like the way that stripe looks, so I'm just going to trim it. And then that's going to be a little accent part of my card. So I'll show you my finished card project that I did. Here I left a little white area on the side and then I used a square to add my greeting. So my final technique uses the masking magic and it also uses an oval die. So I have a piece of the masking magic paper. It's actually 
four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I have the single stitched oval die by Gina K Designs and Thermo Web. They call that the large ovals. And I'm laying that down and centering it between the two sides, but it's a little up high, which is going to give me room for a greeting down at the bottom of my finished card. Now, once I run that through, I'm going to take that oval out. Now, this oval mask can be used for another project later, but this is the part here that I'm going to use. So I'm going to peel the liners off, and you can see that on the Masking Magic, there's a split down the middle of the sheet, which makes it very easy to peel the liners off. And now I'm going to place that onto my piece of white cardstock. Now I want to center this in the middle of the cardstock. And the good thing about the Masking Magic is it's so thin that you can actually see through it. So you can tell that you're in the center, that, that your oval is going to be in the center of your card. And so if you get a few wrinkles in there, just get it down on one side and then lift the Masking Magic and just reposition it. And once I do that, then I'm going to run my finger all around the edge because I really want to make sure it's sealed down tight. Now I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending. The first color I'm using is Tangerine Twist, and I'm going to use that toward the top of the oval. And I want to start on the outside of the oval onto the masking paper and just gently bring that color in so I don't have real definitive lines. So you can see how light that color is going on. Most of the color is on the outside and I'm just getting that nice haze of color inside. My next color is the Wild Dandelion and I am blending that underneath. And now I'm going to go back with the Tangerine Twist and blend those colors together. Once I've done that, I'm going to add the next color, which is going to be some Jelly Bean Green. So I'm adding a little bit more yellow in there, and now I'm adding the jelly bean green. When you do this kind of ink blending, you definitely want to go in the order of a rainbow. You want colors that blend nicely together, not colors that are going to turn to brown when you blend them together. So after the jelly bean green, I'm adding some ocean mist. And I'm just going back and forth between the two colors, getting a perfect blend. So after the ocean mist, I'm going to add a little bit of wild wisteria just at the bottom. That's a really beautiful bluish purple. And then at the top, I'm going to go back with one more color. I'm going to add some coral reef because I want that to be a little bit more red at the top, but not very red. So I'm not using red, just a nice coral. And once all of that is blended, I can peel that masking magic off and I have a beautiful rainbow oval on my cardstock. You can see how pretty that is. So now I'm going to use that as a backdrop for some flowers. And the flowers I'm using are from the Biddy Blossom mini set. I'm going to place that where I want it and I do want those flowers to extend outside of that oval. And I'm going to be stamping them with some amalgam ink because the amalgam ink blends very well with our dye ink. It won't smear or feather if I use it over ink that's not completely dry. So now I'm going to ink that stamp up with some of the Jet Black Amalgam ink, but I am definitely going to do two coats of it because I want it to be very black, and this is an extremely delicate image, which you'll see once I pull up the door of the Misty. And that's why I'm using the Misty because I really want to be able to stamp this a couple times. So I'm going to stamp it again using some more of the Jet Black Amalgam ink. And once that's done, that leaves behind a beautiful image. And you can see how pretty that looks. So let me show you a finished card project that I made using this technique. 
I used one of the greetings from the Biddy Blossom set, and that is the finished card. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video, and I hope you'll give some of these techniques a try. I'd love to see what you can do with the new Masking Magic by Gina K Designs and Thermo Web. If you like today's video, here's a couple others you might enjoy, and you can hit the subscribe button for more. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you again soon.